Right, so let's get straight into this. So I'm um, gonna be talking about lead magnets for the next 15 minutes or so, and I'm gonna be showing you 27 different types of lead magnet that you can use in your business to get leads straight away. Um, so let's go for it. So first of all, though, it's worthwhile explaining what a lead magnet is. So basically a lead magnet is something which you exchange with a business owner um, or a prospect or potential customer for a small piece of data. So typically it used to be an email address, but um, today it's actually gonna be more likely a Facebook pixel or a Google tag, and the person won't even know that they're giving you some kind of a lead. So the reason why a pixel or a, a Google tag is important is so that you can then retarget that prospect or potential customer a bit further down the road. Lead magnets tend to offer a piece of downloadable content such as a free PDF, a checklist, ebook, white paper report or video or something similar. And uh, the key thing though is that you do need to provide a compelling reason for people to download or request your lead magnet. Otherwise they just won't bother. So your lead magnet has to be valuable. It can't have stuff kind of like hidden away in it um, uh, so that or, or be too salesy or anything like that. It's just got to be um, a valuable document which is gonna be helping your potential prospect to overcome some kind of pain, fill an information gap or something along those lines. So what sort of things make a good lead magnet? Well, what I've done is I've prepared seven things that your lead magnet should do or contain if you want it to be irresistible. So the first thing I kind of mentioned just now, it should solve a meaningful problem. Basically, your clients have pains and problems and things like that, and they're coming to you as an expert who solves those sorts of problems, so therefore prospects want access to the knowledge which you have. Secondly, they need to be quick to read or digest. Checklist PDF guides convert well because they can be digested in action quickly. Um, the longer the lead magnet, such as an ebook or something like that, may make the reader feel potentially overwhelmed. Um, however, it may also stand to educate them better, which is, um, like I said, is that compromise between delivering something that's worthwhile but delivering something that's overwhelming, etc., etc. So. Um, also, it should have some kind of like perceived value. So what I mean by perceived value is, if you take a book, for example, a book typically costs like two pounds or three dollars to produce, print. Um, but in terms of somebody's perceived value of a book, they might perceive the value of that book to be somewhere in the region of 10 pounds or 15 dollars or something like that. Therefore, the perceived value is five times the actual value. So effectively whatever you're putting out there needs to be free or cheap that you can put out on a repeatable basis for not very much money but has a very high perceived value by your prospect. Uh, number four, it needs to position you as an expert. So we don't want something putting out, uh, to put something out there that people are going to, um, it's not gonna make you trustworthy, it's not gonna give you credibility. So um, a lead magnet must deliver more than enough value to position you to, as the go-to expert in your field. Um, this trust, this level of trust, the more value you deliver, the more trust it builds. This trust will help you to convert those leads in the future. Promise one quick win. So if you give too much stuff away, then the, your, your prospects are gonna get overwhelmed. So just give them like one thing to do and be as specific as possible. So this is specific about the outcome that you expect your prospects to get from the lead magnet. The clarity will help them to encourage I'll help to encourage them to download more of your lead magnets. Um, so what we don't want is to leave the prospect feeling overwhelmed or not deliver enough value because then just, they'll go away and they'll find another expert and they won't stick with your stuff. And finally, um, there's no kind of waiting room. Um, so don't, don't gate the lead magnet or delay, delay delivering it because basically like with the internet these days, people's attention span is about eight seconds. So they'll move on and they'll find another expert to, who will deliver their stuff like really quickly. Um, so basically what you want is some kind of automation, pixel the user and deliver the magnet as quickly as you possibly can. Okay, so yeah, hopefully there's seven things that you can do there with your lead magnets that will just make it that much more valuable. Um, and uh, here we go. So we're gonna dive straight into what the 27 different types of lead magnet are. So the first one is a checklist. Uh, basically condenses everything the user needs to know into one actionable list. Um, so like, you know, I don't know. Say for example, you train people like, um, I don't know, people who are going to do the Duke of Edinburgh like awards. So for those who don't know, it's like a camping, trekking 
exercise which happens on the moors in the UK. Um, so maybe you could give a, a checklist about the things that you should pack in your backpack, for example. Uh, some kind of a cheat sheet. Um, cheat sheets are irresistible because it, it kind of makes, it positions them in such a way that people don't really have to think too hard in order to action it. The reality is there's no such thing as a free lunch. You know, they, they will still have to do something, but this is like, um, it just makes the whole process that much easier for the prospect and delivers hopefully faster results. Third one is a template. So a template could be anything that provides an outline or some sort of starting point so all the user has to do is fill in the blanks. So it could be, you know, website templates or Canva or something like that. Those are quite common templates that are available. Um, for example, a swipe file. So swipe files are even more resistible than templates because all you have to do is copy and paste them basically. So common swipe files will be things like um, sales letters or email sequences or something like that basically. So somebody could just cut and paste it, tweak maybe one or two simple bits in it like links for example or prices or I don't know, a couple of descriptions or something like that and away they go sort of straight away. Number five, examples. So examples work well because people are searching for examples all the time in all different industries. So um, this could be examples of software as a service apps or something like that, I don't know. Um, so it could be lists of various different examples that people have got out there. Scripts. So scripts are a good lead magnet um, if your buyer needs something to help them speak or write. Uh, so it could be like sales scripts are quite common here. Um, so it could be like, you know, the perfect six step sales sequence or something like that. Um, also the example which we've used here is if they need help prepping for a job interview, you could offer a script to help pitch, um, to help them pitch themselves to a potential employer. So this is stuff that people will speak or write. Number seven, some kind of toolkit. Um, because everybody wants to know what tools the pros use. Number eight is a web app. So obviously mobile phones are like prolific. So um, having some kind of an app um, uh, that lives either on your website or is a native app on your phone, which requires a login to use, um, basically means that users have to sign in um, by email to get the login. And you'll see a lot of, um, uh, they're what we call freemium. So a lot of apps these days start out as free. And then if you want more advanced features, you have to upgrade to premium. So web apps are a really great way if you've got some kind of a software product to sell. It's a great way of getting leads on board. So people trialing out your program. Number nine is a resource list. So a list of resources um, are valuable because they're a huge time saver. Whenever you pull the best stuff together, you're saving users a ton of um, research time. So this could be a, um, let's say for example, if you were a videographer, um, it could be, and you're trying to teach other people like business owners how to do video um, for their business. It could be a, well, a little bit like this lead ma magnet actually. This is a list of different lead magnets. So this could be, you know, for those videographers, it could be a list of videography kit or video kit that you need in order to produce a video for your business. So you save the business owner a load of time in research. Next up is some kind of a worksheet workbook. So a worksheet or a workbook is a bit like a planner, um, except that it usually helps people to complete a specific exercise or figure something out. So um, alongside this video, I've also provided, I think it's about a nine page PDF document that you can go through and start to, uh, it's like a five day challenge. You can work out um, what lead magnet you're gonna, pr gonna produce, why and who it's for and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Uh, next up is some kind of calculator or quiz. So if your users deal with numbers, um, you could create a, a calculator um, and potentially gate it as a lead magnet. So this might be useful for like accountants maybe, or people who deal with numbers on a regular basis, bookkeepers, I don't know, something like that. Recipes, so I bet everybody has some kind of a, re a food recipe book in their, um, in their house. Uh, how often do we look at those nowadays? We probably turn to recipes on like um, various websites online these days. Basically, there are a ton of recipes available on the internet. So um, you might not think of these as a good lead magnet idea. However, you'd be surprised at how many people will opt in for your curated recipes. So this could be again like um, recipes are like little hints and tips. 
and then when you pull a load of hints and tips together, you end up with some kind of an outcome, if that makes sense. So a bit like you would pull a load of ingredients together to make a flan, I don't know, I don't even know how to make a flan. Um, a recipe is a good way of like bringing pieces of information together to provide a bigger outcome at the end of it. What else have we got? A tutorial. So tutorial, so this would be like a video um, or a PDF guide with a load of, um, a simple load of numbered steps to take people through from like, um, you know, an a series of instructions on how to build something or do something or, I don't know, something like that. Fairly self-explanatory. Um, an ebook. So um, the only downside to an ebook is they can't, you know, if they're quite long, you might lose people's interest. You've got to make sure that the ebook is interesting and delivers some value. It could be an ebook which has like tips, checklists, maybe the odd exercise in it or something like that. So it's got a variety of different content in it to keep people engaged, but it's a bit more chunky. And obviously the more you engage somebody, uh, the more value you can deliver and the more likely um, they are to build trust and potentially buy your product further down the line. So the longer the ebook, then um, the, the more chances are of you converting. Some kind of a report. So reports are good lead magnets for B2B businesses, but they can work in any industry that relies on data, statistics, or research. So this could be like public sector businesses, for example, the government, um, uh, those sorts of things. If you do government tenders, then reports are gonna be like gold dust. Um, compiling those reports and taking ownership of them um, is a great way, again, of building trust within your industry and positioning you as an authority or an expert. Uh, getting infographic, in, infographics, infographics design. So um, a lot of people who maybe aren't used to words, um, maybe don't like listening to stuff, maybe actually they need some kind of visual in order to conceptualize what, what it is that they're, they're trying to understand. So um, instead of giving users a bunch of boring text to sift through, why not illustrate your point with an infographic? Um, the extra level of detail will make your lead magnet stand out so much more. You can introduce color and all sorts of fun stuff like that as well. So um, it just makes it that little bit more engaging. Number 17, an educational video. So this was, where was it? So a tutorial. Again, you could do a tu tutorial in a, a video format. Um, it's a, um, a great way to, to visualize what you're doing, but they also have an audio component as well. So if people can't get in front of the video, then you can also like this one, I, you don't need to see my face, I can just talk you through this. Um, but it's a neat way of just kind of like providing some kind of like animations into, uh, and visual effects um, so that people don't get bored. Um, you could produce an educational audio. So this could comprise of like an MP3 um, or a podcast or something like that. Um, but it's a great lead magnet because people can um, listen to it on the move or maybe they can't, they don't have time. Maybe they're driving so they can't watch a video. So this is something that they can do on their commute to and from work. Case studies, oh, I love case studies, love a good case study me. So case studies, reviews and testimonials. Um, uh, basically, but you can make them a lead magnet by um, making these something that people can opt into if they want if people want to see case studies of your work you could give them the option to opt into it um, that was a terrible sentence i just used um so and it could be the one last push which they need in order to buy your product so it's like a um a convincer you could do a webinar so webinars are typically about 30 to 60 minutes in length a bit like a video um uh, or an audio lead magnet, but um, webinars appear to have a higher perceived value. What you can also do is like during the webinar, you can get people who are watching it to engage with it. Um, and also that you can introduce sort of urgency. So all of the other lead magnets tend to be like on demand, whereas a webinar might be something that you put on once and then, you know, it's never, never to be seen again. So there's no recording or something like that. So if it's like a, you know, some kind of secret source that you want to deliver, a webinar is normally a great way to deliver it. Or if you're doing some kind of a product launch, a webinar is a good way to, to launch a new product. You could sell event tickets. Again, this is one of my favorite ones. So a bit like a webinar, but actually you do it live in front of an audience. Um, and basically you offer free tickets on things like um, Eventbrite uh, or in Facebook groups uh, under the events tab in order in exchange for an email address. Um, typically, uh, there's also something which you might wanna check out on my YouTube channel. Um, I've created a uh, Facebook ads for events like video. So it's about a 40 minute video, but I talk through the whole process of setting up an event on Eventbrite, linking it to Facebook and then using Facebook ads to promote it. Like I've had hundreds of people along to my events just through that one um, simple method. And you know that the people who turn up for the event, like there's quite a, a lot of intent there basically. 
You could do an email course, so like five day challenges are quite um, uh, popular these days, so they tend to be delivered via email. So you put your email address in and then you um, get you know five sequential emails delivered to you. Um, you know, and basically that drops straight into your inbox. It's very little effort for the person receiving them. Um, they can just read the emails over five days and take like, you know, five hints or tips or whatever it is. Um, also, you, you know, it doesn't need any fancy software or anything like that. Basically, you can just use MailChimp or, or something just very basic just to deliver those emails um, through to your prospects once they've signed up. Um, talked about ebooks earlier on. So ebooks you can give away for free, um, but also what's better than an ebook, but a physical book. So, um, you know, you can I give away those quite a lot as lead magnets and I incentivize it just by inviting people to leave a review. Um, again, it's about the perceived value. People love books because, you know, they have quite a high perceived value compared to how much it costs to, to actually print books. So, um, you know, or what I've seen a lot of people do is actually collect a small fee to cover the shipping costs. You could offer a free coaching session, consultation, diagnostic or whatever you want to call it. Um, basically in exchange for some, you know, in order in order for you to actually be able to speak to people, you either need a telephone uh, number or an email address. So you could actually give people a, a taster session. And again, that's quite a good way of kind of um, developing trust with, with your prospects and your target market. Next up, we've got a newsletter. So you can send out um, regular newsletters sort of once once a month or twice a month or once a week or something like that. Um, and um, that that's basically the lead magnet in itself. Um, so you don't need to do anything more complex than that. Um, you could do some kind of a giveaway, a competition. So basically people have to, you know, input their details in order to get added into a competition. So there's a lot of that stuff in terms of like people doing Facebook competitions and competitions on their website and things like that. It's basically just brand awareness. Um, and also who doesn't have the opportunity to win free stuff. And then finally, uh, Facebook group is a great way of um, um, getting people into an engaged audience so um, that you can basically deliver value on a regular basis. It's an environment which they are comfortable with. You know, there's 2.6 billion active registered users on Facebook nowadays. So if you can get them all into a group, it's your community, you own it, and then you can help people and gradually build up their trust over a period of time and eventually they can log in. But one of the things you can do is to um, uh, ask for the person's email address upon application and then screen them. So if they don't put their email address in, you don't let them into the group, for example. So that's it. So um, if you um, enjoyed that video, if you found it helpful, like go and grab the PDF download as well, which goes with this. Um, and if you're interested in having a chat about coaching, and growing your business then um, uh, by way of um, offering yet another lead magnet, free thing. Um, I also offer a, a free 30 minute diagnostic call where we can just um, uh, take a look at your business and see whether there's any way that I might be able to help you to grow it. So you can get to that by going to robinwaite.com forward slash diagnostic hyphen call. Uh, it's a short form there which you need to fill in um, and book your slot and then we can have a chat. Um, hopefully you found that helpful. If you've got any comments or feedback, then chuck it into the Facebook group or um, find me an email, robin at robinweight.com. Uh, would love to hear from you and then hopefully um, yeah, get you booked onto a diagnostic call.